25 years of Raw. 25 years. I've been looking forward to this night for quite a while. A celebration, bitches. The 25th anniversary of Monday Night Raw. It's going to be a spot fest of nostalgia and real star power. It's going to be an epic night. The hell with the Royal Rumble and the build up to it because if anything, this Raw 25th anniversary show, they're talking about the WWE views this as more important than the Raw after WrestleMania. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. It's going to be anything and everything, an epic night of fun where you can just shut the old brain down, not have to think, not have to worry about it, not have to do any of that crap. And early on, man, we got off to a flying start. Shane McMahon, Stephanie McMahon, they're warming us up at the Barclays Center. And you feel like you know who's coming out next. And lo and behold... It's the man himself, the HNIC of all legends when it comes to WWE, one Vincent K. McMahon. And regardless of what we can think about him on a variety of different levels, there is no doubt, period, there is no discussion. The biggest star in the history of WWE is Vince McMahon. He is. He was the biggest star of the Attitude Era, and he's been the biggest draw in the company's history because nothing happens at that company without him, period. But Raw doesn't last 25 years without him. So to see him come out and go with the moment and be presented this cheesy GoFundMe plaque and go right into classic heel Vince mode was freaking outstanding. And the whole time he's going on and on and on. You're waiting for the glass to shatter. You're waiting for Austin 316. And by God, you got it. And if any of you silly ninnies out there think that Austin needed a mic, why? For what purpose? For what reason? Vince did all the talking. Austin walks out. There's all this history. They're drinking beer. We all know where this is going. What the hell else needs to be said other than a few stunners? Shane can sell him. Vince, after all these years, still can't. Where's the rock when you need him? Where's the rock? Where's the rock? But at least this opening segment was incredible, and it got you thinking, man, we're in for a great night. Man, we're in for a trip down memory lane, looking back at old memories and maybe creating some new ones. And it's got me thinking about nostalgia. You'll notice there's no microphone plugged in tonight. Yeah, half of you bitch about it anyway. Believe me, you're going to get volume tonight. I busted out the old WWF shirt. Yeah, worn this for years. I don't quite fit the same. Belly's just gotten a little bit bigger. But it's what happens. Damn it. But there's something missing. I just, I just can't. I know what it is. Now we're really ready to bury this 25th anniversary of Raw. Give me a freaking break. If this is supposed to be better than the Raw after WrestleMania, then count me out on that damn show. What a piece of crap. In fact, I feel like I'm missing something. I know what the hell it is. Sitting down right now is for pickaxes. The Schleich Daddy needs to stand. Because this was an outrage. An absolute outrage. Not just for the people at the Manhattan Center who forked over hundreds of dollars to basically sit there and be largely left in the dark for the damn show, get a couple of segments here and there, a crappy couple minute squash match where Bray Wyatt's going over woke and not hurting. What the hell is going on here? Some weird ass Undertaker problem. The only thing we say is at least for one week we can rest in peace. The nightmare of him coming back and wrestling one more time against Cena at WrestleMania. And then they got to sit there and wait. You can't blame JR and the King if they were falling asleep there. You can't blame the crowd at the Manhattan Center if they're chanting for refunds and crap. But ultimately, ultimately keep this in mind. If you were stupid enough to spend 500 or whatever the hell dollars plus 
on a ticket at the Manhattan Center, knowing they were running the Barclays Center at the same time with seats. So many more thousands of people than the stupid-ass Manhattan Center. And you thought you were going to get all types of action. You thought you were going to get a chock-full show. Then you were a moron, and you deserve to part with your money and be made to look like fool, fool, fool. Because that's what you are. You, 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 all of you, any of you that went to the Manhattan Center and forked over that money with the expectations. See, there's the problem. It's WWE and expectations. And as you've got a clear reminder of again tonight, they don't go together. And if they do, it ultimately leads to disappointment. And consider my black ass disappointed by this crap tonight. What in the blue is the blue? Fucks with this shit. Sure, you got the nostalgia here and there. It's the ADA, they're playing poker. Even though we made it into a pick on Heath Slater night for whatever the hell reason. Oh, it's Mark Henry and the Godfather. You damn right. At least something. At least something. Brother Love loves you. Brother Love got one of the biggest pops of the night. The Boogeyman got one of the biggest pops of the night. And here's the whole thing. I understand nostalgia is supposed to carry the day. But for crying out effing wow, for weeks, for weeks you know this has been coming up. For weeks you've been promoting this. For weeks you've been building this up. For weeks you've been hyping this up and pumping that show full of smoke and blowing it down our throats and in a lot of cases up your asses. And this is what you give us. Just because you can try out a bunch of freaking legends and names from the past, that doesn't automatically mean it's any damn good. If you can't do anything interesting or compelling with them other than to say, Oh, look who it is. Oh, skip this, skip what the fucking do with this person. I never really gave a crap about anyways. And all the while, for one night, you wanted three hours. Where at least if you were going to get random, pointless filler crap, it was at least going to be good, entertaining, pointless filler crap, and the WWE couldn't even the word on that, bitches. Because you still had to have freaking random ass eight women tag matches. Ooh, Oscar started throwing bitches over the ropes. Who gives a shit? Seriously. Why in the hell? Are we using multiple segments with the APA and a poker game to set up to a freaking Heath Slater Rhino versus Titus Worldwide match? Just so that way you can sit there and have the Dudleys put freaking Slater through the damn table again. Who did Heath Slater piss off? The Miz versus Roman Reigns for the IC title. Cool. Cool match. The Miz wins. Hooray! But it's like anything else with this damn company. They give you something to celebrate, so that way they ain't sticking up your ass later. Do you know what this means for freaking WrestleMania? Like we've known for almost a damn year now. And then when you get back to the Manhattan Center at the end of the night, this awkward ass pieced together DX reunion segment. Like, we're in the introducing the New Age Outlaws, and by this point in time, the Manhattan Center crowd is rightfully, even though deservedly, rightfully pissed off. So they're chanting, we want refunds, and this is bullshit, and all this other crap. They half-ass pop to the New Age Outlaws, and then somebody thought it was a good idea to make a big presentation out of the freaking x pop appearance. It's why the crowd was chanting, one, two, three, one, two, three. Because there's a reason it's called Xbox Key. It's called the Get the Fuck Off My TV Heat. He might as well have dressed up as the 123 Kenny. He would have gotten a much better reaction, as you can clearly tell by the Manhattan Center. And then, and then, we're doing all of this to set up the arrival of the bad guy, which should be, in theory, one of the highlights of the night. Scott Paul Silver, who the hell knew this was still possible? And as soon as he comes out and he starts doing this thing where he says, I'm still a big deal when I want to be, and I'm a bigger freaking star than anybody on this crappy roster today. What did this company do? They cut to commercial! The hell?
How are you cutting the commercial for during a damn entrance? You couldn't even give us that. You couldn't even give us the justification for having to sit for almost three hours of this crap to get to this point. You couldn't give us the satisfaction of seeing the complete bad guy entrance. And all of this segment was to do was to set up to a freaking squash match between the stupid ass Battler Club and the freaking Revival. So that way we can put over freaking Bower Club and the stupid too sweet because after all, fuck the bucks of suck. And yes, still, fuck the bucks of suck. But how stupid it is this? Like you look at Triple H and Shawn Michaels, no matter how much grade, no matter how much hair they want. You look at Scott Hall, same thing. And you say, God damn it all. These are professional wrestlers. These are the larger than life characters and personalities. And these weren't even the biggest stars of their day. These aren't even near the biggest stars of all time. And now I look at Finny the Twink and his ball chopper club. Taking on two dudes. I don't even know what the hell they're supposed to be. That's what the people of the Manhattan Center are paid 500 plus bucks for. That's what I spent almost three hours getting up to. But of course... Because we know the Royal Rumble is only going to be 300 damn hours long on freaking Sunday. We got to run well over three hours in that five minute run over to give you another 10 minutes of crap. Throw all the legends out there around the ring for whatever the hell reason because it ultimately didn't matter and it made no sense. For the main event at the Barclays Center. It's Braun Strowman. It's Kane. It's Brock Lesnar. It's built up to a triple threat that nobody gives a crap about. Ooh, Braun Strowman put Brock through a table. Boo freaking who? At this point in time, who gave a crap? Because I know I most certainly did not. Like, that's how you close the show. And that's how you decided to do this show. A stupid ass squash match where it's not Woken Matt Hardy saying, delete, 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 to that stupid ass Bray Wyatt character. It's Bray Wyatt squashing Woken Matt Hardy. Like, what's Matt Hardy supposed to think after this match? I can't even beat Bray Wyatt. They just love to stick it to Matt. Because you have Bray some type of commodity at this point that you've got to protect. Screw that! This was unbelievable. And I knew I was doing it too. See, this is what I get for being positive. This is what I get for having some type of expectation. This is what I get for having some positive feelings about what I was going to get on the 25th anniversary of Raw. That's my own stupid ass fault. And I promise you this much, I will not make that mistake again. Any of you want to pump this show full of smoke in the comment section, you do that and you can kick rocks. This was crap. How ridiculous. This is supposed to be a big freaking deal. And we can't even get that right. Like, how do you start off with that awesome segment with Austin and Vince and then just have the whole night kind of descend into, like, even like John Cena and Elias, okay segment, didn't need to happen on this damn show. It just didn't. That should be one of the highlights on a typically mediocre Raw. And the sad thing is, on the 25th anniversary Raw show, it did end up being that highlight. That's how fucked up this night is. This company never ceases in its way that it can find to piss off fans like me. That's it, I'm done. Fuck this show. If you liked it, kiss my ass. I'm glad you did it.